Yay! Welcome back, guys, to the channel. This is Maffer here, continuing my watch of Free Zero with Episode Two. Ah, uh, so in last episode, we were introduced to main character Subaru, who um is kind of cringy, kind of funny, and uh, more infuriatingly, kind of oblivious to things that are happening. Right? But apparently, uh, as many of you guys have pointed out, that is supposed to be part of his character, and apparently, it's going to make for some good story as well. So we'll see about that. Right. Uh, we also know that he has a special ability, being able to reset time, a la uh, Edge of Tomorrow, something like that. Not really sure if it's just simply resetting to one single point, or it's uh, some sort of time travel, and whether or not he can actually, you know, change the reset points um, as he wants. Right? Because depending on which scenario we're going for, which me mechanic we're going for, there can be potential upsides and consequences for each of them. So that's something to take note of as well. But the rest, well, we're pretty early in, so I don't really have anything else to comment on. Um, oh, I am going to continue using the director's cut, so uh, in this episode, it is going to sort of differentiate a little bit because um, the episode one of both TV anime and this current version I'm using, uh, they're both about you know one hour long, right? Whereas in this one, it's going to combine two episodes of the TV anime within one episode. So we'll see how it goes for this first time, uh, whether it works or not. If it does turn out to be too burdensome or way too long, I might just cut it in the middle or something. But for now, let's try it out. So let's get on with it. All right, let's begin in three, two, one, play. Hmm. All right. Considering what we've seen so far, we're probably gonna have like a, like at least ten minutes of him still trying to figure out what this works. Oh, opening. All right. <laughs> I have actually already heard this opening before, though. We do, right? Since I am a Bandery player, <laughs> the Rosilia version of this. Well, then again, it's a pretty famous anime song in its own right, so... Multiple versions? Wouldn't it be funny if uh, his reset ability actually turns out to be like multiple parallel versions of himself? Hey! That might also be something as well, right? You know, having infinite parallel universes, so it's actually. <laughs> Each of them? Huh! I actually didn't know that Felt was actually a major character. Alright. Alright. We're about three minutes in. Let's see how long Subaru takes to uh, actually figure the situation out. Again, I said maybe 10 minutes of this episode. Let's see. Hmm? 
Oh, here. Well, reset again. Finally figure out. Oh, hey. Not bad. Actually, better than I thought. Not 10 minutes, 4 minutes. All right, four minutes. Good. <laughs> Sorry if I'm being a little bit snarky. That's just how I do things here. <laughs> okay. Time leap? All right. You would think as a gamer or something, you would use something in like a... You know, honestly, if I was in that same situation, I'd be like, oh, load game? <laughs> Yeah, he's not going to be able to. <laughs> really? That's what? Oh well, yeah, actually, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. She might fall into the same thing. Well, not necessarily. Maybe Felt was killed because you were there, dude. And if you weren't there, Satella wouldn't have gone there, also. What? Huh?
Why do you have to go through this alleyway? Like, seriously, dude. Is this like seriously the only? Ooh. Where are you? Lionheart? Okay. <laughs> Oh, he was trying to- okay. <laughs> I had no idea what Super was trying to do. I mean, you can clearly see he's well-dressed, Subaru. Nation from the East. <laughs> Like, that's going to help. That's just gonna have, like, the exact opposite effect. It's Elsa.
I mean, you're just gonna get reborn. <laughs> oh well, I get it, I get it. Not everybody's able to throw away their lives like that. Well, it's not even actually taking this seriously. I thought it was actually going to be broken or something. True. He wants to get out before Elsa comes. Did it somehow? Right. Can you 
gonna move on it, or else I'm gonna die again. Really? Of course that would be the logical outcome. Is it actually going to be, uh... Ah, it's probably going to be, uh, what's it called? Stel Stella? Accidental resemblance?
Now's not the time to be looking. Okay, now things are getting interesting. All the players are here. Kill all of you. <laughs> Okay, just shut up, Subaru. <laughs> okay. That was actually... I take my words back. Good job, Subaru. Damn. Wait, you're a dude? Well, I guess his, the name is Puck. Yeah. Even though she's the enemy, I do like her style.
Really? Oof. What is her class? I, do they have classes here? Ooh. I'm sure. Hi, Dara? Okay. I'm actually surprised he can actually keep up with her. Way too open. Lionheart. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, so I guess Felt told Reinhard. All right, so who is she? <laughs> ah, I guess she does really like guts. As long as she has a reason. Alright. How's this fight gonna go out? Woo! <laughs> Damn, that's hype! Oh, sick burn! <laughs> Roasted! Ooh. Well, I guess I did say... Last episode. Oh. Really? Okay. Huh. That actually means that when two high-level people fight against each other, it's also... Justice equal, justice equal a fight on who can control the mana. <laughs> Look at the art style. Damn. Isn't that a little bit overkill? <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So, we've stabilized the situation now? Okay, I guess he's going to... Well... <laughs> what the hell? Tell me your name. <laughs> I knew it. Ah, there we go. Ah, oh, that's a nice smile. Yay! I seriously thought he was actually going to get reset in this episode as well, at the very end there. Hmm. Okay! Happy ending for now. What? This law? So... Is she going to help him, or is he... Okay. Emilia Sama. Are they from the same organization?
What? 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 So it's the fact that she can hold the Signa in the first place something of a uh, of importance? Okay. Well, at least we're progressing, right? We're progressing. One step at a time. Alright, uh, are we actually going to get any animation here? Okay, apparently not. So, I will see you guys after this. Alrighty, so there goes episode 2, or I guess if you're watching the original TV version, episode 2 and episode 3. Um, and like I said, we are making small progress, right? I was actually fully expecting him to die at the very end there and for the entire thing to reset again uh, as a sort of like a building block, right? Because we are in the initial episodes after all, even though he's already reset how many times already? Three times? Uh, I'm not really counting, but uh, I was actually expecting for for the series early on to let him actually reset once again once he uh, just about reaches a, a milestone, right? So um, uh, I guess that is some progress. And in fact, uh, if I were to make a guess right now, you know, with all the different mechanics that could happen in regards with this time time travel or reset or whatever you want to call it, I would venture a guess and say it would be something similar to uh, the series that I've mentioned before where they only have one reset point and so that is it and we are going to spend actually a lot of time seeing him back at the beginning stages, right? Um, and I guess uh, this may or may not be a hint but the opening, the opening animation to this, it shows Subaru still in his, in his, uh, in his tracksuit, right, as well as with his uh, bag of goodies from the convenience store, even whilst after meeting all the other characters as well. I don't know if that's just a deliberate design choice, spoiler free, or that actually is a sort of uh, spoiler in one way, saying that we are going to spend a lot of time um, going back to the beginning, let's just say. Uh, but we shall see, right? We shall see. Um, as for the story itself, I mean, I give I give super props for not taking too long to actually figure it out, right? I literally thought that we were gonna spend the first ten minutes uh, just going back and forth, particularly between him and Amelia, and maybe trying in vain to to get the misunderstanding under control, and then eventually having to start all over again. But no, it was uh, it was done fairly quickly. Um, as for the actual story in hand, I also liked the way that they utilized Elsa. To, to just appear and basically get rid of all the potential, you know, the, the potential, um, the, the, the boring stuff, I, I could say, because we gotta have him ta uh, making, making light of his misunderstanding with Amelia, and then we've also got to have him explaining to, to Felt you know, what this is all about and whatnot. All of that was actually cut short because Elsa came out, right? And there's nothing that better solves uh, or unites uh, enemies than when you have a common enemy yourself. So that was a good one to to utilize it in that part to save us from some of the um, I would say kind of tedious kind of stuff because you know, we all know that the misunderstanding is going to get um, Get resolved sometime. We don't really need to sit through all that right keep the pace going um and the fight scene was definitely good, particularly Reinhardt. Um, by the way, I really, really want to call him Lionheart. I don't know if that's like a deliberate choice or not. Uh, and to me, it's the easiest to remember him as Lionheart. But, um, you know, pretty cool, pretty cool. And I think we can basically also infer a few things, right? So first of all, uh, both Reinhardt and uh, Amelia, they probably belong to the same organization, or at least they belong to the upper classes, particularly because uh, Lionheart uh, called Amelia Amelia-sama, right? And so it seems that they do have some sort of connection between them. Reinhardt was definitely lying earlier on when he told Subaru that he did not know anybody that with that kind of appearance, right? So we can already infer that. Um, we can also kind of infer the insignia, uh, Amelia's insignia that uh, that she lost to Felt, uh, with Reinhardt being all mysterious and um, 
you know, sh shaken at the very end there. I guess it's a sort of insignia that also has a magical ability to, I don't know, like sense the latent power or sense the race or, or whatnot of the user that's holding it. Um, at least that's what I can, that's my best guess from that scene, right? Perhaps the, the jewel in the middle is supposed to change colors or something, uh, depending on who was holding it, right? Um, so yeah, that's that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm thinking of right now. It's, I don't think it's definitely a case where um, he's being um, he's being overtly um, he's being overtly serious uh, to the situation just because the fact that it was the insignia in itself. I think there's probably a deeper meaning behind that after all. Um, so we got that down, and what else? I guess we can also talk a little bit a, a little bit about the mechanics of this world. So last episode, I did make the thing, I did make the um, the sort of theory that probably even all the sort of physical attackers in this world, you know, those that are using swords and whatnot, like the knights and and so on and so forth, um, maybe archery or or other spears, whatever you want to call it, they probably use not just their own physical abilities, but um, basically blessings from deities, or in this case, maybe just pure mana, right? So they do sort of empower their physical attacks with this kind of stuff, um, as we can see demonstrated here by Reinhard. But apparently not everyone does it, because Elsa didn't, certainly didn't seem to utilize any of that, but um, we shall see, right? Uh, I do f find the sort of dynamic at the very end there to be interesting. You know, the fact that there is a limited amount of mana in the surroundings, and for those uh, users who really want to pull off like really big um, abilities, uh, really, really higher level abilities or whatnot, they are going to actually, um, they are going to have to dig into the mana pool of this area, and there is sort of like a capacity right there. Um, I'm not sure how relevant it's going to be within this series, but uh, if this was more of the, the novels that, that focused on world mechanics and stuff, I would instantly be thinking, okay, so in this case, it's probably really, really hard for, um, for those mid-level people to fight against those uh, high-level people because once they try to utilize their abilities, they can probably drain the area of mana and leave the the lower-skilled people, the lower-skilled fighters, completely helpless because they don't have anything to draw upon, right? Um, so that probably will have turned into an interesting dynamic where once we have two really high people going at each other, it's kind of hard for those who are lower level to really help out in any way, in any significant way. Maybe that's true, maybe that's not, um, but just based on the mechanics so far, that's, that's all I can theorize for now. And so, yeah, that's basically it for this episode. Let me guys know if you if you do want me to at least uh, cut the episodes in half or something, maybe one hour episodes, and if I include the, the review and commentary afterwards, it is going to turn into one hour. Maybe that's a little bit too long. Um, and I could also, because they do have the, the title screen in the middle as well, I could probably just cut half and half um, and go for that instead. Let me know what you guys think. So... Anyways, that's it for this episode, and, well, I will see you guys next time as well. Stay tuned, and...